And this is a Muslim home. In Islam, a successful mother or father is the one who has nurtured the children in a beautiful way, leading by example. And there is one more point I want to raise before I go to how to choose a spouse. And that is, in the same way that we would be so careful as to the upbringing within the home, even if it is 100% perfect, say for example, there is no, nothing bad that happens in your home, you are happy with the manners of your child and grow up and so on, the external environment plays a bigger role in shaping the child nowadays than the internal environment. What you say to your child can be, yes, okay, mom, okay, dad, yes, dad, oh, wow, you know, it's okay. You have the, the, the rare cases of the women who might be in hijab, you know, in the home, and the mom says, wow. And as soon as dad drops them off at varsity, everything is gone. And then, dad, don't come now. It's still, there's 10 minutes, dad. Just park your car outside. Why? Because I quickly need to dress back how dad dropped me. He must pick me. What happened between when dad dropped me and picked me, only Allah knows. And sorry, your schoolmates know as well. <laughs> that is hypocrisy. So in order to solve that, we need to know Islam tells us to guide our children as to the type of friends they should be having with responsibility. Sometimes we're too busy at work. Oh, dad, you know what the dad says to his child? Well, look, I work and I sweat to earn the money to send you to the university. Or I work and I earn the money to do this for you and to send you to the best of the schools. But dad, you don't even spend one minute with me through the day because you don't even have time for mom. Where are you going to have time for us? We're guilty of that. You know, a typical father, very busy man, comes home. He doesn't even greet properly. I hope this is not the case in KL. Remember, I'm fortunate that it's my first visit, so I cannot pinpoint to say this is a problem here. But I can tell you that it's a problem elsewhere where typical dad comes back home and you know he uh, puts his bag, that's if he has one nowadays, you just need a phone to move around with. And he puts it aside and what happens, he will uh, sit in front of the television and flick. The flicking is a male habit, if you know that. You flick, the news is there, you're not satisfied with it, you flick again, you know. Is it because there was no female, you know, saying the news or is it because you really are interested in the news? It happens sometimes. These type of things, the, the flicking, flicking, and they are asking you, would you like to eat? Oh, dad, welcome home, and so on. And you're just looking at the screen. You know, we would have loved it if there were little cameras where we could appear on the screen to attract dad's attention. Hello, dad. <laughs> but this is a home. Is that a Muslim home? If we are not going to be fragmented as a result, what do we expect? So a Muslim will not do that. You need to realize your responsibility. You went to work. I normally tell people to spend or to have one meal, one meal with your children a day is worth more than 10,000 US dollars. And that is a very minimum figure. Because you're, you can sit not only table manners, but at the same time, talk, speak, let them open up. How was your day? Oh, and do not blast a child when they come up with some negativity, but teach them. Because if the child says, dad, today I met a few people. You know what? They gay. I don't know why I'm raising this issue every time. But anyway, it's a problem of, of the age. And you say, what? You get up from your seat. You dare see those people again. Okay, okay, okay. That okay was connected to your temper, not connected to the brain. Have you, so, have you understood that? So do not treat your children that way. You engage them in discussion. Sometimes we don't have the time to engage our children in discussion, but we've got the time to think up how to expand our business. What's the point of a successful businessman? And yet his house is totally out of order. It would have been good if we had little tags for a little while saying, you know, like when you have a lift, they have a tag saying out of order. The next day it starts working. If families were like that, it would have been okay. Put a tag for a few days saying out of order, we're fixing it. But it does not work that way. You need to maintain it constantly. Constantly it needs to operate. And you need to understand when someone comes up with something within the home, talk to them, find out how it happened. Perhaps the school you sent them to was wrong. Perhaps the environment you, you allowed them to dive into, you did not advise them before they went into the ocean to say, you know what, you were a big fish in this little pond. Now you are going to go into the ocean. You are just one of the little fish in that big ocean. Be careful that a whale doesn't come. Or you might be living in the belly of the whale thinking you are in another pool here can happen. So we need to guide our children, talk to them. The point I've raised, I'm sure you've picked it up, is that when your child comes up with something negative, in order to maintain the home and protect it from defragmenting or fragmenting, you need to 
Communicate with the child, engage the child in a beautiful discussion. Spend the time. When you hear that type of statement from your child, it will tell you, I need to have two meals now with my children, not just one. 